Hello, my name is Andy and I am the village idiot and mom with a car and a GoPro and an unhealthy amount of time on my hands. Welcome back to the district of Newark and Sherwood in Nottinghamshire. And for the second time on the channel, I'm visiting a village with this name, a linear village. This one, welcome to the parish of Curtin. Curtin is a village in Newark and Sherwood, Nottinghamshire, located three miles east of Ollerton. According to the census in 2001, it had a population of 273, which reduced to 261 at the 2011 census. Originally recorded as Shridlington, the name has evolved over the centuries with changes in language and occupancy to Kirkerton, which literally translated as a farmstead with a church. Eventually this would be shortened and it evolved into its present day form of Curtin. The parish church of Holy Trinity is where we begin, at the north of what is a long north to south running street, containing most of the village on either side. A 13th century church, this was restored in 1865 in the Victorian era. It's a small church which holds parish records, useful for researchers of ancestral tourism. Holy Trinity Church stands in a prominent location on a small hill. It consists of a chancel, a nave, an arcade of three bays, a north aisle, south porch and embattled western tower with pinnacles containing a clock and eight tubular bells. It's a listed building. The lit gate and churchyard wall are also listed and all of them are listed grade two. So this corner is interesting. I've just been uh, filming the church and of course you get a great view from up there. And uh, there's been a couple of lorries that have come around this corner and they've struggled to be quite frank. <laughs> they really have struggled to turn this left turn towards Ollerton. Uh, nothing has come to the right towards Walesby, but I imagine that's actually a little bit easier. They've got a little bit more road to go at. They can't see around the edge of this uh, white cottage. Now to walk down Main Street beginning outside the church. We're two miles away from neighbouring Walesby at this point via a narrow twisty road. Curtin Village has a quaint charm and is within easy reach of the main Sherwood forest attractions. There's a countryside pub here in the form of the Fox at Curtin. The name and early origins of the village may be traced back to about 2000 years ago as nearby Roman settlements seem to indicate this. Curtin was typical of many a Nottinghamshire village. It's always been recorded as a farming village, from the Saxon farmers through to the hop farmers of the 18th century. With its location being so close to Sherwood Forest, Rufford Abbey and the various estates of the Dukeries, you can imagine how deep the history runs in this part of Nottinghamshire. Perhaps there'll be more in places like Pearlthorpe, which you can walk to from here. Now look at this for an impressive old building. I wonder if that's anything special or whether it's just a house. It certainly seems like it should be because it's massive. That house was Hall Farm and it was built around 1630 by William Clarkson. It's an early example of brick facing on walls of rough skerry. Curtin Parish Council usually meets on the first Tuesday of every month at Hall Farm. Notice of the Parish Council meetings are on the agenda which are posted on the two village notice boards in the village and I found both while I was here. The village even has a defibrillator in the old BT phone box. Ah, we found some more yarn bombing here. Look at these guys. Yeah, <laughs> little snowmen on top of the post box. Isn't that fabulous? The handsome Georgian former rectory at Curtin stands in grounds of more than an acre. It's the base now of Fairfield Control Systems Limited. 
So here at the old rectory, the road has a little bend in it to the left and then to the right. And that is as far as I plan to walk down here before I head back. And there's two reasons for this. Firstly, because the rest of the village towards the southern end is quite a distance away and I'll take the car down for it. But also because I'm losing daylight and the amount of time it would take me to walk down there and walk back again, uh, I'd probably finish this episode in the dark. And uh, to be honest with you, uh, as far as the rest of Curtain goes, there's only a couple more things I need to catch down there. One of them is the playing field. So we'll put the camera on the dashboard. And when I get to that point there, just outside the old rectory, I'll turn it on and we will see what else is to the south of Curtain. further south is the playing field and a few more properties. The village has never been large, at best totalling around 998 acres. It was once owned by the Clerkson family from the 16th century before passing to the Galley Knights and then to the Fitzherberts. By the time the Fitzherberts had acquired Curtin in 1846, the village population was around 265, and the population is of course very similar to this now. Seventeen men from Curtin joined the military forces and their names are recorded on the war memorial. The village had seen a major change immediately prior to the declaration of war in 1914, as it had been sold and residents had seen a major upheaval. Old established families and employers had left and new residents had taken their place. Modern day Curtin sees an average house price of £226,000, a white British majority at 98.1%, and a population density of 60.8. We quite often see the Derbyshire flag on the channel because people in Derbyshire are proud to fly it. We don't often see the Nottinghamshire flag, but here at this house behind me, we've got it up there, you see. It's there next to the War Memorial, flying proudly in the uh, garden of uh, that house in front of me there. Right, I've got one more thing I need to cover in Curtin, and to get to that I need to drive a bit further to the south and take a left turn. And while I do that, I'll give you today's picture bit. Here it comes for Curtin. Curtin Parish also includes Booton Industrial Estate to the southwest, which is seen here. The rest of today's picture bit is a little unusual. All the other things you're about to see here are mentioned in the final section, which is arguably Curtin's most interesting part. Right on the parish boundary at the southern end of the village is Forterra, a brickwork dating back 150 years. The Butterley Brick Company relocated here from Ollerton in 1956. Butterley bricks can be found in modern housing developments but also in much grander buildings like St Pancras Station in London. Also down here is a railway line. The former Booton Station was in Curtin Parish. It no longer exists and neither does a signal box, which was burnt down during the miners' strike in 1984. 
vital to the war effort, the line through Curtin carried coal from the Derbyshire coal fields to Immingham for the coal powered ships of the Grand Fleet and Merchant Navy. Okay, that's pretty much it for Curtin. Although there's one more thing that I was intending to show you, but I can't actually get to it because this here is a private road. It's a football pitch, believe it or not, and it's just up here on this hill. Where my finger is, there's a, there's a football goal there. You don't normally see that in an industrial estate. That's because that is home to Curtin Brickworks Football Club. And uh, like I said, I was hoping to uh, get a shot of uh, the pitch but uh, that is as far as I can go, I'm afraid, because as you can see, it's private and I don't want to trespass. There you go then, that's the parish of Curtin here in Newark and Sherwood. Two down now and 82 more to go in this district. Time to move on to my next one, hopefully. I've just about got enough light to do it because it's a very tiny one, it won't take me very long, so hopefully I can get it done before it falls dark. Okay. This has been the Parish of Curtin, and I've been Andy, also known as the Village Idiots, and I'm out. Mm -hmm.